Welcome to another IB Environmental Systems and Societies video. Today's topic is 1.1 perspectives. A perspective is how somebody sees the world or a particular situation. It's informed by their values, their assumptions, and their personal beliefs. Because perspectives are personal, they give rise to a wide range of different positions on environmental and social issues. Frequently, those issues are intertwined and inseparable. The perspectives that someone holds also influences the way that they act behave. That means they influence the decisions that people make. An environmental perspective may influence a person's dietary choices. Perspectives are informed and justified by social, cultural norms, scientific understanding, laws, religion, economic conditions, and global events. Basically, that means that perspectives are informed by the expectations of social behavior, a person's educational attainment in terms of how well they understand the way that the world, the natural world works, and of course, it's influenced by the society where they live. What are the laws? What are the religious traditions? How wealthy or poor a person is? And then, of course, global events. And if those events happen to happen to you, then it's a personal event or a lived experience. We can think of all of these things as inputs into a worldview. A perspective is different from an argument. Perspective is simply the way someone sees the world, so we call it a worldview. An argument is a justification for that particular perspective. And so the argument are like the reasons for someone's worldview. Values are the things that people feel have worth are and are important to guide their lives. Here on the screen, I've got a collection of different values, just one word, freedom, creativity, diversity, love, adventure. Different people will prioritize these differently. They have different value systems. One of the things that you could do in a class is take each of those words, put, them on, put each one on a separate card, and then have each person put them in order from most important to least important. And then have a look at one another's cards and see how you may share some things in common and where your differences might be. Those values influence the way that we communicate and act. An individual who values freedom and creativity and growth very highly may behave quite differently from someone who places control and safety higher on their list of values. Differences in perspectives based on different values may lead to tensions. The values held by organizations, whether those organizations are corporations, whether they are non-government organizations or charities, those values are communicated through advertisements, media, policies, and actions. A lot of times there are tensions between the values and actions of individuals and organizations. So here on the left, people may disagree about the morality or ethics of eating meat, but also socioeconomic situations may put people in a place where even though they value something, because they are in dire straits or difficulties economically, they may be forced to make decisions or take actions that go against their value system. The different values that people and organizations have lead them to have different priorities. Here are some campaign pictures from the last United States presidential election. They're both about Donald Trump. They're both about coal, but they represent polar opposite perspectives and priorities. We can survey people about their values to determine where they fall in what we call environmental value systems. It's important to make your survey unbiased when doing this, and there are some specific tools and guidance for that in my slide deck. Have a look, design your own survey. So worldviews are the lenses through which people perceive and make sense of the world around them. Right? It's how they interact with other people. It's how they interact with the environment. And those worldviews shape values. They shape cultures and the cultures in turn also shape worldviews. They shape people's philosophy, the way that they perceive everything. Worldviews give rise to what we call environmental value systems. An environmental value system or EVS is a concept that you're going to encounter in every single topic within the ESS syllabus. So make sure you're comfortable with it and make sure you know it forwards and backwards. An environmental value system is a model that shows the inputs that influence people's worldviews 
and the outputs that result from those worldviews, outputs such as actions, decisions, that kind of thing. We classify environmental value systems into three broad categories, technocentric, anthropocentric, and ecocentric. These categories aren't hard and fast. There are no hard boundaries between them. That's why I have it presented here as a spectrum. They blend together, they kind of bleed together, um, and someone can have characteristics of more than one of these broad categories. So don't think of them as little boxes or pigeonholes that everybody fits into. There are people that fall in between these categories because they have characteristics of both. As you might guess, ecocentric people view nature as being central to human identity. They place tremendous intrinsic value on living things, on the natural environment. That's non-monetary value. Intrinsic value is simply worth from being. They prioritize what we call bio rights. That's a term you must know for ESS. That's the right of all living organisms on earth to exist. Ecocentric people believe in self-restraint. That is denying ourselves some things in order to protect the natural world. People with an anthropocentric value system place people at the center of their worldview. It doesn't mean that they don't care about the environment. They do, but they perceive people as having responsibility for sustainably managing the environment. And that's as part of a global system that will also include social and economic systems. Anthropocentric people generally support that management model through the use of taxes, laws, and regulations to control what's going on. They also believe strongly in building consensus. So it's not a top-down approach and it's not every man for himself. They want people to discuss and come together and reach a consensus or agreement about how to manage the environment for sustainability. And on one end of the spectrum, we have the technocentric people, as you might guess from the name, techno focuses on technology. And so a person with a technocentric worldview has a strong faith that people will always invent some new technology or find new tools to solve any environmental problem that they encounter. Technocentric people are generally really positive about the impact that people can have on our world. They're big into scientific research. And the reason they support scientific research is so that we can better understand how natural systems work. And once we know how they work, it's easier for us to manipulate, or control, or change them for the benefit of humanity or to solve environmental problems. People with technocentric viewpoints also generally believe in a pro-growth agenda where the economic realm may be prioritized over the environmental realm. People's perspectives about environmental issues can change over time. People get older, they have different life experiences, they experience different global events, they learn something that they didn't previously know. So all of those inputs that go into a perspective can change over the course of a person's lifetime. We can see that on a societal scale. I've got a graph here about smoking rates. When I was a kid in the 1970s and 80s, I could walk into a store as a 12 year old and buy a pack of cigarettes without showing any ID and nobody batted an eye. But since that time, there have been a lot of public campaigns, both from the government and from organizations like the American Medical Association that try to inform people of just how bad for human health smoking is. And so over time, globally, in the last 40 years, smoking rates have decreased. That's an example of how a worldview can change. We have trends in human behavior, like meat consumption. Here we see that as the world has become wealthier, as people earn more money, they tend to eat more meat. That may not sound like an environmental perspective, but that's a change in the input into a worldview. In the environmental movement in the 1960s, was lobbying for regulations in the United States to protect water and air, resulting in the creation of the Environmental Protection Agency and the passing of the Clean Water Act and the Clean Air Act. These are like major milestones in the environmental movement, and they signified a shift in the worldview of a large enough proportion of the American population that the national government enacted new laws and created a whole new part of the government in response. That environmental movement continues to grow and evolve and change as we learn more about our natural world and the impact that people have on it. Attitudes also change 
in response to the media that they consume, whether it's television, internet, TikTok, whether it's books that they read, news that they read, all of those same inputs that go into a perspective because they change over time, because there are always new events happening and new developments, the environmental movement has also changed over time. One of the things you might be asked to do on your ESS exam is to discuss the influence of one of the things on this list in the growth and development of the environmental movement. I suggest you memorize a case study, dates, location, broadly what happened, the people that were involved, and how that case study changed global perspectives and advanced the environmental movement. I suggest you take one person or item from each column on this list and develop a case study. You can do this as a class and then everybody share them around and that way you've got a whole collection of case studies and examples that you can use to support your writing on the exam. That's it for topic 1.1 perspectives. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, please like it. Consider subscribing to my channel. It helps me spread the word to other students around the world. You can find resources related to this and other ESS topics on my website, mrcreamerscience.com.